Alright guys, I haven't seen too many videos online. It was a little confusing to follow uh, directions based on a pamphlet that came with the Phantom. So it's always best to get a video and an illustrated uh, view of just how to do things on these. And the most important thing to do on these is the compass calibration. Anytime you go to a different area um, of the United States or wherever you're, you're located at, and especially when you first get your Phantom, you're going to want to do a compass calibration. Now, I was just down in Florida, so it's a totally different area from Illinois. So I did a compass calibration when I went down there just to make sure I didn't lose it in the ocean and stuff like that. And uh, once you learn how to do it and you know, you'll um, be able to do it based on memory. And uh, what I like to do is do it just about every flight before I go out. That way there's no, uh, you know, compass errors and the possibility of a flyaway. It's one of the biggest things that can cause a flyaway, according to DJI. And uh, it's so easy to do that uh, I just do it every time I go out to prevent uh, any kind of compass error. So we're going to go through it right now before the storm hits. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, so the most important thing to do is to make sure you're not out by a bunch of, uh, like a big concrete parking lot or foundation, whatever. A uh, big concrete structure that has a lot of rebar in it and all that stuff. Um, no, you know, power lines or cell phone towers right next to them. You want to do it away from any kind of interference and especially away from any kind of a large metal source such as... Um, a bit metal structure or like I said the rebar in the uh, the concrete because those items will definitely mess with your um, compass calibration since it's all based on magnetic north alright so the first thing you're gonna do is turn on the transmitter like usual and then your phantom power it on and then you're gonna turn your GoPro off if it's on here and then you're going to go over your controller to the S1 stick which I would think be S1 S2 but it's just the opposite this is the S1 stick and this is the uh, S2 so what you're going to do is you're going to flick it back and forth back and forth at least five times and then your um, LEDs on here will actually go to a solid yellow so we're just going to show it on there Okay, and see they're blinking green right now because I already got GPS lock. We're outside, and we're gonna flick them. I'll show you. So I just do it until it do go solid yellow, and then know we're in the mode. Okay, so we got the yellow solid color, and we're looking for the solid green color once we know the first part of the compass calibration is correct. And the way you do the first part of the compass calibration is to go counterclockwise, just like this. And usually it takes one full revolution and then it'll go green. Just like that. Hopefully you can see that. Now we're going to put it nose down, which is obviously the front. Okay? Just like that. Mine's easy to tell because it has a uh, GoPro on it. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go uh, counterclockwise on this axis. And usually the same thing. It's one complete revolution. You can see it's done. It passed and it's going into the regular GPS find mode of the uh, controller sticks on here. We're on GPS mode right now so it goes into the flashing green um, mode on there and that's how you know that it is a good complete calibration. Otherwise you're gonna start getting um, error codes from these these LEDs on here where it'll go I believe red and green, red and green, it'll just flip out on you Whereas now, all by itself, it went into GPS mode, which is what we're in on here. And it's f it found the satellites, and it's locked in. So for those that didn't know, now you know.